Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a blessed day today. Uh, first, I want to give you the gospel. It's found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, and that's that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead for our justification. Jesus always existed. He is the second person of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus was born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, never sinned, and shared his precious blood on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of all our sins, past, present, and future. What God commands... Yes, it is a commandment, is to believe this gospel, the testimony concerning his son. The will of God is for all men to receive the free gift he has provided for them through the atonement of sins made by Jesus Christ on our cross. Okay? God wants us to be reconciled back to him. The problem is many don't want to receive this free gift. And this is nothing that we can do on our own. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. So you see, we cannot sit here and tell ourselves, you got to repent of your sins to get saved. Repenting of sins is works, okay? And that is not a condition for salvation, okay? We can find that out in Jonah chapter 3, I believe in verse 10, Okay? Um, why exactly how God explains that, why it is a work, okay? And repenting of sin doesn't, 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 you know, get you closer to heaven than, than, than me sitting here, you know, clapping my hands because I heard the gospel and not actually believing it, you know? Because the bottom line is this, to repent is to change your mind, okay? And to say to repent of sins means you change your mind of your sins. The problem is we have this flesh, so if you repented of your sins, it means you change your mind of your sins for salvation. You are making a promise to God that you will never do that again. That means every time you sin, you just lied, you are back to square one. That means you have to keep doing it over and over and over. You see that cycle? This is why it never saves anyone. No one is saved by repenting of sins. That is something that the enemy has perpetrated where people are getting frustrated because they think, I have to keep doing this. I was on that, on that train for a long time, guys, you know, before I came to understand the grace of God. That's the problem of not understanding the gospel because the enemy will just come in and trying to embed his own leaven, and it goes from there. Now, with that being said, please just believe the simplicity that is in the gospel that is by faith alone. That's it. You say by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. That's it. Solo fide. Faith Plus, nothing equals salvation and eternal security. You believe on the gospel. You receive eternal life. All your sins are wiped clean, past, present, and future, and forgiven. You are justified in the eyes of God. And guess what? You have access, free access, anytime to enter through the throne of grace. Any freaking time, guys. I'm so sick and tired of people trying to stop people from seeing themselves the way God sees them. Okay? So please understand that our fellowship with God stays intact forever. That is that is the benefit of believing the gospel. You have fellowship with God forever. Because if you don't, because someone says, oh, well, if you sin, you break fellowship. But how can you break fellowship if that's the case? I thought all sins were paid for. If all sins were paid for, we can't say we break fellowship because it's almost like saying that the, God closes the door and then if you repent of that sin, then he opens the door again. Well, you're going to be, you're going to be doing that all day. I mean, that's, that is so full. It's the same cycle. The enemy is very crafty. Many Christians, unfortunately, have fallen into this whole idea of, you know, you know breaking fellowship or, and, then, and then restoring fellowship. You always have fellowship with God. I mean, period. That's why the door remains open for you. Because if you don't have fellowship, the, the door is shut. You know, for for those who work in, in a certain companies, you know, you see how we say we have an open door policy, right? And the open door policy means I can come and tell you whatever at any time, you know? Means I don't have to sit there and you shut the door and I'm afraid to approach you because I know I've messed up. No, I go to you anytime. That's what open door policy is. That's what it comes to. Every born again believer, God has an open door policy for you. That means that relationship, that fellowship is always there. Remember who lives in you. Christ lives in you, the hope of glory. God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, they abide in you already. So how can you break fellowship if you have his being living in you? 
you are a part of him. He is the head, you are the body. The body is joined to the head. The head is joined to the body. You are one. So if you're one, you can break fellowship. I mean, you have to just think practical, okay? Anyway, I just want to put that one to rest. Secondly, someone commented something on my channel, on one of my videos. I had to take the video down because it's nothing but an enemy. Um, from the surface, it seems like a genuine, heartfelt, you know, concern for the lost. But, in, but beneath that, you could see the spirit of the enemy laughing behind that. You see, this is the exact same thing that he did with Eve. I'm going to go to scripture first, and then I'm going to tell you that. And then we'll, and I'm going to break it down a little bit for you, why this is so such a hogwash. So we're going to go to Genesis chapter 3, okay? The temptation and the fall. This is the same tactic of the enemy. Again, when, when you can start paying attention to what people are writing, don't just take things as at face value. Really use logic and process what people are writing. And then that's when the Holy Spirit will really show you, uh-uh. Because you will feel it also in your spirit, like, ah, something is just off, completely off with this, you know? You will know because the spirit will make that work for you right away, okay? 11 is just something, if you allow it, it will keep, you know, spreading. And I'm just not, you know, about that life, guys. Not anymore, at least. <laughs> you know, maybe in the past I did, but not anymore. Anyway, temptation to fall. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made again sort of he said he was more so than any beast in the field okay very clever and he said unto the woman yeah has god said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden and the woman said unto the serpent we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden but of the tr fruit of the tree which is in you in the midst of the garden god has said you shall not eat of it neither shall you touch it lest you die and the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. See there? The leaven just got implanted. Now, he got into her head right away. See, this is what I'm talking about. I, I, I'm reading this because this is kind of a psychological thing that this guy wrote here. That's why you have to like see it and be like, the devil is a lie. Nice try, though. He got into her head and then she used logic and started processing. Remember, the tree has been there the whole time. It's been there the whole time. But because of she listened to the enemy and processed what he said and actually trying to make sense of it, look what happens next. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, well, it's, it's always been there. You knew it wasn't good for food. But now the enemy don't, don't, don't whisper into your ear. And then now you felt, you know what? Hey, maybe this is good for food, right? That it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired, to make one wise. She took out the fruits thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her. And he did eat. So both of them was right there. It wasn't like Adam was somewhere far off and then she had to go. No, Adam was there too. He didn't do nothing. But again, this is all part of God's you know, plan. He already knew this was going to happen. But anyway, back to my <laughs> situation here. So what ended up happening was because of this situation, this guy wrote me. He was saying how, you know, have you considered, you know, what if? That's a what if, okay? He said, you know, speaking, what if, but... Okay, sorry guys, I had to pause the video for a second because, you know, I needed to move locations <laughs> so I don't hear people cleaning up and making all kind of noise in the background. <laughs> but anyway, so this individual was writing saying, you know, have you considered, you know, the lost... This is just me paraphrasing, okay? Have you considered the loss, you know, like your loved ones who who will be left behind, you know, during the rapture? You know, what if you have the option? Well, I'm sorry. He said um, that you that will probably get saved during the tribulation, you know? 
what if you have the option wouldn't you like to just you know stay back instead of going in a rapture so you could try to help them through the tribulation so they could get saved huh and then he said because this should answer where your heart is if you really you know um you know, you know, pretty much care about the loss, you know, or your loved ones, you know, then, you know, in other words, you trying to go in a rapture is selfish for trying to go in a rapture while you have loved ones who was not saved, who can potentially get saved during the tribulation. So you choosing to go in a rapture instead of being here with them is selfish, you know, that your heart is not right. This is this is why I read the verse I just did. So you can see how the enemy operates guys okay we have to expose him all the time anytime he comes by the way this person never commented on my channel never seen their, their name before but the fact that they came and just laid this nonsense psychological attack you know in there i knew right away from the enemies i just deleted that that but that really teed me off you guys i was so like fired up and this happened several days ago but yet obviously still bothering me you know hence why i am over here talking about it <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, with that being said, first of all, let's let's kind of break some things down. The rapture is a promise, which is the resurrection. It is a promise to those who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, because Christ is the is is the first resurrection of the dead. Okay. If he is the first resurrection, anyone who believes in him is also a partaker of that resurrection. So to say that someone is selfish for being a partaker of the resurrection is actually insulting God. You're calling God selfish that he gets to rapture his church while some people will have to go through the tribulation because they choose to not believe the gospel. The gospel is available to all men, okay? Many people don't want to believe the gospel right now for themselves, you know what? But during, during, during the tribulation, they will. We see that in the book of Revelation, okay? The tribulation saints, how their numbers was innumerable to count. So, this is the problem. The narrow road is exactly that. You know, Jesus said narrow is the way, but only a few there be to find it. Why is that? Because it is only him. The road can only fit one person and one person alone. And that person is a person that has that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing else. If you add faith plus, that means you're adding to that road. And that road is narrow enough to fit just one faith. That's it. So you put faith plus. That plus automatically puts you outside the boundaries of that door. The door is just as wide as the road itself. That means that narrow road is also the narrow door. There's only one that stands in the door, and that's Christ himself. Okay? And you can only walk in through faith. You can't walk in with faith plus anything else. Just faith alone. That's it. That's how simple he's made it for us. Many reject this. Another thing. If you're going to play a what-if nonsense game, okay, enemy of the cross, that's exactly what, 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 what that person was operating under and probably don't even know it. They think they have humility. Oh, you care for the loss. You see what I'm saying? The enemy plays with your emotions and trying to play with your with your love for people to get saved. So it becomes selfish. It turns something that's good into something selfish. Okay? So that you can have the guilt of, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You, you are really talking to the wrong person. Because I can't wait to get up out of this crazy, whacked up earth, okay? And be with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in person. Who would want to give that up? I mean, who who, who in their everlasting mind would want to give that up? That got to be the dumbest thing I've heard. Seriously, beyond dumb, okay? To think that Jesus is coming to say, oh, no, 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 no. I'd rather stay here and go through your tribulation and suffering. First of all... Anyone who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ will never go through tribulation. So your what ifs is exactly from the enemy. Okay. Secondly, it's almost like saying, what if Jesus never resurrected? Would you still believe? That's the dumbest thing. 
because the resurrection is actually God's own justification for us, showing us that he was satisfied with the payment that was made on our behalf on our cross. That's why we see the resurrection, okay? Because that resurrection is also a promise to everyone who believes. Are you what Bible are you reading? I mean, this is crazy. Again, it's like when I thought I've heard it all, I hear some off the whack stuff. Okay. And it really did upset me because I'm like, why would the enemy use this person trying to speak, trying to make it seem like he's so but what it is is trying to bring condemnation to your conscience because you were excited for our blessed hope. Titus, chapter two, waiting for look, looking for a blessed hope. Okay? We are looking for a blessed hope. And the soon appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. What, I mean, why is that not exciting for some? Some people don't want to be excited for that. <laughs> well, go preach the gospel to your loved ones then. Or, or well, we're going to bring you, you know, you know, tribulation. So, is you, are you the one who's in charge of salvation or is it God? Your job is just to preach the gospel. They hear it. They can either believe it or they don't. And if they don't believe the gospel, that's on them. It has nothing to do with you. But sometimes it's not even you that have to preach the gospel to them. Everyone has access to that. Don't all you have access to freaking, you know, you know, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, I mean, Twitter, TikTok. Almost everybody have access to that, you know? So if if you have access to that, then <laughs> And and then you are over here, it just proves again God's point. If someone is not seeking after God, that's exactly what God said. It shows you the condition of man. No one seeks after him. I mean, again, it shows you the condition of man. You see, we love God because he loved us first. And not only did he just love us, he did so much for us, including that promise of the resurrection. So to come to attack, that's another side of attack of the resurrection, which is a psychological attack to attack the conscience. I'm sorry, you failed miserably with that attack, enemy. You did. But I'm here to tell you guys, anyone who have believed the gospel, be excited for the rapture. Be excited because that is us finally seeing our great God in person, and our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in person. Who would want to miss that? What a glorious day that would be. Do you think you're going to be thinking about loved ones while you're up there? Nah, man. Nah, you ain't going to think about nobody but the joy you have in Christ and your loved ones who is with you up there. That's literally what you're going to be seeing. So again, don't fall for that nonsense, guys. You know, Don't fall for that. Always remember this. We have a God who is faithful. And just, who has made salvation available to all men? The question is, would you believe that gospel, how simple it is? Or would you keep trying to play a little mental games and allow the enemy to use you that with your false sense of righteousness? Because that's exactly what it is. It's a false sense of righteousness, you know? Our righteousness comes from God himself. And that only is something that's, given to us by us believing in the Lord Jesus Christ because our own righteousness that we have is filled directly before God. It is unacceptable. The only righteousness that is acceptable before God is the one that is in his son because Christ is our righteousness. So to attack the rapture, you know, by trying to attack people's conscience, I'm sure he probably posts the same thing on other people's rapture, you know, video that's trying to encourage people about, you know, the resurrection, you know, of the saints, you know, and us who are alive here. So, guys, don't let anyone speak some wicked and some condemning stuff into your conscience to where you start, you know, trying to make you feel horrible for expecting Christ. Start to make you feel horrible because you got saved and you have this wonderful promise, okay, of this resurrection that is coming to receive your glorified body. There is nothing to be ashamed of about that, okay? Nothing. I'm going to take you guys to one final place and then we're done, all right? 
So this is Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. <laughs> oh Lord, people, I swear, people will be tripping, y'all. Look at this. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separate unto the gospel of God. Uh, hold on. Which he had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Okay? Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was made of the descendants of David according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are you also the called of Jesus Christ. Guys, <laughs> No one attacks the resurrection actually understands the gospel. I'm sorry. The moment that they attack the resurrection, it's clear they don't understand the gospel at all. Could this person be saved? Possibly. But I know for a fact, it's the enemy speaking through them. Because that was a complete psychological attack on the gospel. If I wasn't secure in the gospel and didn't understand the gospel for myself, that would probably have my conscience run all over the place, feeling guilty. Oh, what if this is that? Again, it puts you in a place of, I have to keep doing something. Works. You see You see what it does? It takes your eyes from Jesus Christ to yourself, and yourself is flesh. And that flesh brings you right back to condemnation under the law. That's exactly what the enemy does. So be mindful, guys, okay? Do not allow the enemy to steal your joy that you have in Christ Jesus. Don't allow the enemy to rob you of your promise that you have in Christ Jesus. Our promise of resurrection is sure and is coming. So again, you guys have a blessed day and stay vigilant, saints. The enemy is literally working through so many people right now. You just have to pay attention to your comments for those who have, you know, channels that they use to promote, you know, the gospel. Just be mindful, guys, okay? All right. I love you all. And as always... May the peace and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.